Alright then everyone, hello and welcome to another episode of Brave New World Blindfolded. Door number one, door number two, and now I have to wait through this short little cutscene here. So this episode is just going to be a bit of spring cleaning between Daryl's tomb and the cave on the belt, I mean the cave of South Figaro. It's just kind of there, but I gotta do it in between. Because it doesn't really go with either the before or after, so... Why not, right? Do it with its own thing. At least it won't be egregiously short like the BFLG. That's door. That's a door. Unfortunately, to get through to be able to upgrade Edgar's auto crossbow... The problem is I need to watch the Coin of Fate scene first which is a pain in the butt, because right now I can't get rid of Sabin in any way, obviously. And there's no way to get over to Julian without having Sabin... when I have both Sabin and Edgar in my party. Not without watching this cutscene first, so... cutscene that would normally be something I'd skip now has to be in the way, which is unfortunate. Not worth watching at all in a blindfolded run. I mean, I guess I can listen to the music, but I could listen to the music on YouTube while doing something else, so... No point in that. There isn't even any sound effects in this, I don't think. I don't even think there's a single one. Oh no, wait, never mind. The coin flip at the end does make a noise, but... Not that it matters. I don't need any of them to determine where I am, so... And I'm sure I won't get a whole ton more enjoyment out of this scene by hearing one single DING at the end. So yeah, this adds a little bit of length to the segment anyway. There will be some battles here because I'm also going to... In a different mini-segment portion of this, I am going to be walking to Collingen and then walking to Daryl's Tomb. It'll end after I execute the opening cutscene of Daryl's Tomb, so... The enemies here have pack a slightly more of a punch than the enemies before, but it's such a short walk that I don't really need to prepare hardcore for it, so... I'm not worrying too much. Oh, now that I think about it... Now that I'm... I forgot about this in visit. All my practice was done with Edgar Impt, so I guess I can have him start using the auto crossbow, or maybe even the bio blaster if that's still stronger. I think they're probably going to be fairly on par at any rate. Because those, uh, bogeys. They, they've got pretty decent defenses, like, pretty decent defense. I'm not even 100% sure it'll matter what Edgar does, though. Actually, maybe I'll want to use uh, Bioblast anyway, because Auto Crossbow probably won't be enough to kill the uh, Deep Eye guys. And... Which means he's only really going to be contributing against the bogey in the first place. And Bile Blaster will do more against that. So yeah, that'll probably be my plan. Oh yeah, I forgot I opened that door on the way out. Not that it matters, but it's a thing that happens. Now I go right. One, two, three... Four, five. The design of this library is a bit of a pain, but I'll have to live with it. So now I have to do it left and down until I get down this staircase. This one's a little bit harder to time. All I can say is, just like in the first time I had to go down to one of these side rooms in Figaro all that time ago. Thank goodness there's that guy on a chocobo getting... stopping me from running out into the desert, because otherwise this would be 
fairly painful, I think. I'd have to run... I'd have to count a lot of steps out, that's for sure. That should probably be enough. One, two. All the way down. You know, I could even check with this guy where I am. Talk to him. Yep. I think... I'm not sure whether I just didn't think of checking at all the first time around. I feel like something... I felt like I was locked on my menu for longer than I should have been there. Anyway, up and right. Gotta listen for the door noise. There it is. Okay, I'm in the room. So I go right to get up the staircase. And I should be in front of that table thing. Now I go left and up. Should be take me to the back left side of the bed. In hindsight, now that I think about it, this room isn't that hard to visualize. I probably could have just done this spatially and taken less steps to get through, but while still keeping it fairly easy to remember. So now I should be at the back left. Walk around the headrest, all the way right up the stairs. And now that I'm up the stairs, I can walk left and down a few times, and hello, Julian. This, uh, this may just be a set of dialogue boxes, but it's definitely long enough for me to need to menu trick at the end of this. Because <laughs> otherwise, I wouldn't really know, especially since this isn't even something that's in vanilla, so it's not really something I have an intuition for. Up. And I'm going down the staircase. This uh, weirdly Dragon Quest style staircase there. All the way left and down. Now I hit the headrest that was in my way earlier. Now it's handy because I can just go down and right and I'll make it to this thing. This desk. Not That's not too far away. So I'm just going to start going left and down. And now I pretty much exit the room. After a while, I can just run straight down and out of figure out. That should probably be enough to do it. Down and out. There we go. But I still have more I want to do in this segment. Right. It's weird how I'm stepping from one tile of figure out to the other, but whatever. Door number one. Door number two. Door number three. Celeste, you're doing the game show all wrong. You can't open all three of the doors, you greedy guts. Now I go right, now I go up. I can technically do that all in one step just by going up and right, but... It's this is kind of habit by this point, and that part isn't hard to remember, so... It sticks out in memory. Uh, text box... Bye. The part is it might be useful for something, but for the moment... Defibrillator and... Uh, flash. I'm not running a magic at Garba, that doesn't mean they won't be useful ever. And all the way down to the bottom. One, two, three, four, five, and we're home free. Just gotta walk out the door. I don't even have to skip a cutscene now because I've done all those shenanigans a long time ago. Should still be on items. And see. So that took nine minutes, already longer than the BFLG segment, and we've still got half of it to go. Over half of it, maybe even probably, yeah, would be over half. Alright then, let's go. So I changed my mind from the last segment about what Edgar would be doing, and I changed it twice, because I was thinking. You know, the Flash is even stronger than the Bio Blaster, obviously, so why wouldn't I use that instead of the Bio Blaster? And it actually far outshines the Auto Crossbow, even against the, uh, I Goose, or, well, made it without even a battle anyway. Even against the I Goose, it's. Oops, don't wanna go. Let's just leave for a second. Even against the I Goose, the Flash is the stronger one, or at least close. 
so there's really no reason to use the auto crossbow over it at the moment. However, the, uh, it turns out the noise blaster is pretty useful here too. It muddles both the bogeys and the igus, or not igus, but I don't remember what they're called in World of Ruin. It's probably enough for that one. This one might take a while, because there's lots of NPCs running around. Not an Ikea level of NPCs, but still a lot. But yeah, it also allows the, the iglue ripoffs to use dread. I mean, glare on all three of them. And the, it works on all three, so. Noise Blast is probably the most useful thing Edgar can do rather than wasting his time using Flash for. Well, it'll cut down the hit, number of hits that the bogey takes to die by one, but that's probably all it will accomplish. So that's probably enough for these NPCs right here. No door noise, okay. There's two spots that I can end up that are okay, and I've got plans for both of them. There's one spot I can end up that's not very good. And that would be going up towards that passageway behind the old man's house. That's not good at all. But, if I'm not unlucky... Yep. Plan B is a go, I guess. I've got a route planned through this place for both doors, which I could have entered. This one is the harder one by a tad, but... So it's unfortunately enemy uh, NPCs. Well, they are kind of the enemy <laughs> in this game. It's unfortunate the NPCs diverted me towards that door rather than the other one. But I'll make do with it, hopefully. So now I go and talk to the item shop guy. Okay, that's the item shop guy. Four of those. Four of those. Four of those. And that's it for him. One last guy. just by the top thing again. Dark Hood. Not uber useful piece of equipment, but for my stamina 7 at least, it will be a tad better than what else I have. So now I can run over to the left here. This will take me past the weapon shop guy. Run down, and now I can exit the door. Just go down and right till the cows come home, and then I'm good. Pretty much. So I'll hit the river bank at the far end, the same way I exited Collington in the World of Balanced a couple times, and then I can start going back to the down on the left. I'll exit the town. I won't save it, but I'll exit the town and then go back in and say hi to Setzer. That should hopefully be enough down and lefting, so le I mean down and writing. So down and left. And then I'll be out of here. Now I walk back in. So now this part's the more familiar bit because I did this in the BFLG. I didn't do any of the shenanigans in Figaro and I didn't go buying dark hoods or anything like that. I'm lucky the NPC can divert my path to a much nicer place, but it turns out that didn't happen. Now that I think about it, I slept in Figaro. I probably don't need to sleep in the inn here when I never even got a battle on the way up. So let's not do that. One, two. Thankfully I know the route, whether I'm talking to the innkeeper or not. Handy thing to know sometimes. It wasn't really in the, my plans to do it this way, but thankfully I just happened to know that random piece of information. Why am I menu tricking? 
I've got some time before this ends, and a couple music changes as well. Thankfully, this takes me right outside the cafe, which makes it really easy to get out. I mean, I'm sure not complaining when they're just taking me through places on their own through the cutscenes. Just makes my job a lot easier. And now I'll get my fourth addition to the party, and I should be able to very easily handle the encounters around here with sets are being free healing or wanton destruction. Says is always a nice character to have around, really. I don't even care what I get with his slots. It's, most of the time, it's pretty dang good either way. So, now that I know where Daryl's tomb is... Thank goodness the, the game pointed that out to me, or else I would have probably been lost in about 30 seconds. Gotta be somewhat careful here, because that Narsh guard can get my way. But, he's not unlikely to hold me out of the way for long. So yeah, I'm probably at the far end now. Left and down, and let's exit the town. There we go. One last part to this, after I equip Setzer, which would probably be a good thing to do. In most scenarios. Uh, so should still be on items. Skills, equip. Oh yeah, Setzer's in the back row too. Uh, let's just go back up to items. Put him in the back, because having him in the front is not very helpful right now. For whatever reason, he's in the front at any rate. I was pretty sure I was on the top level of the menu there, but skills, equip, sensor, equip, top slot, top thing, equip that, this is the only one I'm really making any sort of decision on right now, gold shield. I really just wanted to dump random stuff on him for the moment. Alright, so straight down. Because the enemies in here aren't too bad, hopefully. So I shouldn't need to... ...stack him perfectly or anything for this part. Daryl's tomb should be fairly forgiving as well, because I exit the dungeon some several times. So... Every single dungeon segment is going to be very short. One. Well, I got one. Alright, so let's see who comes up. It is Celeste or Edgar, so... Well, it hit one of my people who aren't protected by Reflect, that's unfortunate, but, you know, that's life. Flash is down here, but Noise Blaster is the one I want to use, and that's up here. Uh, I don't care who you are. That was seven. I only need to figure it out afterwards. Alright, he killed something. Get on you, seven. Uh, what? Oh, wait. I messed that up. Edgar is... So what's Celeste doing now? Uh, that... <laughs> uh, well, I didn't need re-raise for this fight, but mm, good for you. I forgot that Runic is non-existent again. That led to some shenanigans. So now who is this? Down... Okay, now this is Edgar's uh, tools menu. Use the Noise Blaster. Now let's put you back up to your attacking command, which is what I actually want to do with you. Your sets it. Yeah, that should take some of the bogeys off my tail. Star Fox puns for the win. <laughs> Uh, 
This isn't over yet, apparently. Well, I think they just used it on themselves. It's worse than glare, unfortunately. That was probably a royal waste of Edgar's turn. Hopefully nobody's in trouble from the... that lodestone earlier. Hopefully Setsu's has been keeping up with it. What was that? Oh well, I don't really care. Uh, so I've got one. Two. Three. Four. Five. Left. Well, that's a good sign that I'm moving in the right direction. Hopefully I don't have any troubles. That was Setzer. And everyone seems to be right on the ball today, thanks to that probably a preemptive strike. Which means this battle should be pretty easy. <laughs> should be in the offered word. Well, that's one thing dead. Deep Eye, that's what they're called, right? Unfortunately, that might just be the GBA Vanilla, it might be SNES Vanilla, I don't even know. What was that? I am not sure what's going on anymore with some of my moves. I swear I just used region on myself, but... Nobody should be in a position to do that. Uh, okay, this is Setzer. Oh, good work, Setzer. That's probably the end of that. Yep, <laughs> had a feeling. They're not taking an H-bomb that far into the battle. Hopefully I'm not wasting too much of Celeste's MP, if that's what I'm doing. But I haven't really prepared or experimented with this part. I'm just kind of rolling with the strats that I had done before, for the most part. The only thing I really investigated which was which of Edgar's tools to use, but... Alright, so this should be enough to get into the dungeon. Aha, that's good news. The segment's pretty much over now. I just want to open up this dungeon in case I do have a fail in here. But this dungeon is laid out fairly forgivingly, so... Thanks to the fact that I end up warping out twice, and I'm pretty sure I remember to buy ten more whistles in the World of Balance at some point. Oh yeah. Jumping that up again. And that's the end of that. About twice as long as the BFLG. See you next time!